Hello YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel. My name is John Balfour and I'm going to be discussing various philosophical subjects um, in this video and in videos to come. So if you're interested in discussions of these uh, subjects, please like, subscribe, uh, comment if you wish. I'm going to talk a little bit about power. Um, my conception of power and what it represents in the world. Uh, so first I want to go over some basic definitions of power. Uh, the first is the what we can call the logical physical definition and that is when we think of our bodies as extending in space, um, movement. <laughs> As an example, we'll say that you wake, we wake up in the morning and uh, we want a cup of coffee, right? So we have a will to make coffee, but we have to get out of bed to do it. So the will is not enough to accomplish this can have the will to do it, but if you don't move, you're not going anywhere. So power is the mechanism by which we achieve the action. Uh, we extend our bodies out of bed and into the kitchen, etc. This is the uh, very mundane uh, view of power. Uh, second is the power over other things, objects, people. Uh, let's use James as an example. James wants to go to work. He gets in his car. Again, the will to drive the car is not enough. The car is not going to drive itself on his will. He has to put the car in gear, and drive. Again, this requires the mechanism of power, physical power. Um, then, uh, under that definition of power over objects, things, or people, power over others, another being, let's say. This can be uh, from the power to uh, direct an animal, like your pet. You have a dog, you can command it to sit. It may or may not obey you, depending on how well you've trained it, but there's a certain power. You've directed the, the animal. Then there's the power over a person or a group of people. This is the individual in communication with someone else, uh, directing them to do something, um, or the individual over a group of people, or a government over a nation. Uh, so this is the type of power that occurs between people, power relations, uh, as Foucault put it. Um, now underpinning power itself, the real essence of power, why it exists at all, in the case of man, humanity, um, is a very basic question, one of the very big questions of philosophy, and that is, why am I here? Um, now most people, I think, do not ask themselves that question, or they don't delve into it to any very big degree. They, they might consider it in passing because they've heard it 
somewhere, you know, through some form of media, but they don't seriously ask themselves the question, because ultimately it's a question without an answer. The few that do undertake to answer it seriously go on long spiritual journeys, you know, they visit other countries, they ask gurus, or they become very religious. In the case of someone that was already raised in a religious household or in a particular religion, they already know why they're here. Their religion has given them the answer. In the case of the everyday person that might not be overtly religious or do not put much stock in God or the idea of God or spirituality, they might devote themselves to a career um, or a profession or whatever, an art, uh, and they consider themselves, their lives as devoted to this by default, this is the reason they are here, because they've put so much energy, time, emotion into this particular thing. Um, but the question remains whether one has answered it through religion or through career or through some relationship or anything else. The, the, the question does not go away, and it's not answered by any of these uh, methods, not in reality. Um, because the question remains for everyone. People take their experience as the why they're here. You know, they might have answered it for themselves because they're content, or they think they're content with the answer they've given to themselves. But the question is a universal one. And can we answer the universal question by this one person's experience? I don't think so. I don't believe so. Um, so, unconsciously, I think each mind knows this. And they know the question itself of why am I here, even though the person consciously never, might have never asked themselves that question, uh, or never delved into it deeply. Unconsciously, I believe the mind does know of the question without ever having actually heard of it. And because it's unanswerable, power is the mechanism by which existence of that question is justified. That is, existence has to have a justification. There must be a reason why I'm here. So, uh, the unconscious takes power, or the ability to act in some way, as the reason. And the rest is incidental to this mechanism. Uh, whether one becomes a doctor, or a pianist, or gets wrapped up in religion, that's all incidental. Power becomes the only mechanism that gives rise to these undertakings. So, so there is no good reason for it, because the question is unanswerable. And action becomes the answer, power, power itself. And this is the fundamental answer to the question. And all value judgments that follow afterward, whether a particular action is good or bad, morality given to action is incidental as well. Or it's, it rely, it, 
It's reliant upon social relations and what people, how many people engage in the same type of actions. So uh, that in a nutshell is my view of uh, what power is. If this is if, if this has interested you, please leave a comment and uh, I'll make future videos. Thank you.